Those were dark times by which the whole human race came near to annihilation. By a cause quite impossible for the average medieval human to comprehend or quite explain. Except indeed, to refer to God. Some kind of bad air. A miasma that brought death not in a specific part of the world, nor upon certain men, nor did it confine itself to any season of the year. A miasma that embraced the whole world, infecting humans by the millions, respecting neither sex nor age, rich nor poor, kings, clergy, or peasants alike. Many centuries later, scholars in an effort to describe those dark and grim times end up naming this miasma the Black Death. No one in the Middle Ages called it the Black Death. For them, it was the Great Mortality, or the Great Pestilence, or even in some cases in England, the Blue Sickness. As we will see, it wasn't a foul air or miasma to blame for the plague that raged like a savage beast through Europe in the 14th century. In its path, huge trenches were filled with bodies, tier upon tier like ship's cargo, thriving communities erased from the map, and the course of history changed forever. And I, Agnolo de Turo, called the fat, buried my five children with my own hands. And there were also those who were so sparsely covered with earth that the dogs dragged them forth and devoured many bodies throughout the city. Discovery. It's the year 1894 in Hong Kong, China. A young Swiss French bacteriologist and a member of the French Colonial Health Service named Alexandra Hirson is tasked with investigating the outbreak of the bubonic plague. In the laboratory, he manages successfully to isolate the bacillus responsible for the plague, which later in his honor is named Hersonina pestis. But Hirson is not the only one to credit for this discovery. Kitasato Shiba Saburo is also remembered as the co-discoverer of this infectious agent. The plague is classified as zoonotic. The prime carriers of this pathogen were the oriental rat fleas. Their path of transmission to humans usually involved a flea feeding on an infective rodent, becoming a carrier, and then jumping from the rat and biting a human host. There are three basic types of plague, the bubonic, septicemic, and pneumonic. The bubonic infects the lymphatic system, resulting in the development of large swollen areas called buboes around the lymph nodes, usually at the groin, neck, and armpits. From this form of plague, we get the most common name that we use for the Black Death, the bubonic plague. The septicemic, on the other hand, infects the blood and its ability to clot properly, resulting in internal bleeding. In addition, due to the lack of circulation, small blood clots start to form and body tissues start to die. The pneumonic is the outcome of inhaling infectious material. These colonize the lung tissue, resulting in severe chest pains, cough, shock, and eventually death. This form of the disease is the most dangerous and easily transmissible. The Routes of the Plague the plague started in Asia. From the east to the west, the plague moved slowly but steadily along the already established overland trade routes, but also from the sea routes. In the dark bowels of the ships, the threat lurked and waited, making its way faster than by land. The plague strikes the port cities first. In 1347, the Black Death shows up in Crete, on Cyprus in southern Greece, Alexandria, Dubrovnik, Venice, Sicily, Pisa, 
Genoa, Marseille, Avignon, Mallorca. These pockets of infection spread to the rest of the continent, heading inland, changing millions of people's lives forever. The sailors brought in their bones a disease, so violent that whoever spoke a word to them was infected and could in no way save himself from death. The Horrors of the Plague. Every morning in the towns and cities of Italy, the corpses of those who had died in the night would be placed out in the street, and eventually funeral beers would go to the town and collect them. It was by no means rare for one of these beers to be seen with two or three bodies upon it at the time. Many were seen to contain a husband and wife, two or three brothers and sisters, a father and son, priests. They were on their way to bury someone only to find bears carrying three or four additional beers that had fallen behind them. Such was the multitude of corpses that there was not sufficient consecrated ground for them to be buried in. So when all the graves were full, Huge trenches excavated in the churchyards, into which new arrivals were placed in their hundreds. The horrors of the plague had nearly turned people into terrified, panic-stricken animals. Many died in their own houses, the smell of their rotting corpses finally drawing their neighbors' attention. People in fear of getting sick refused to give assistance to those who had been their dearest friends. Fathers and mothers refusing to nurse and assist their own children. In many places, there was no one to tend the animals or to bring in the harvest, so the crops rotted in the fields and the livestock roamed free. At least half the people in Avignon died, for there are now within the walls of the city more than 7,000 houses where no one lives because everyone in them has died. Therefore, the Pope bought a field near Notre Dame de Miracle and had it consecrated as a cemetery. By the 14th of March, 11,000 bodies had been buried there. The Black Death is estimated to have killed between 30 to 60% of Europe's population, and may have even reduced the world's population from an estimated 475 million to only 350 million by the 14th century. The plague that raged throughout the world changed nearly everything about human society, and may be, in a large measure, what produced the modern world. Join us in our next video where we take a deeper dive into plague-infested medieval Europe. Thanks for watching.